stuff, you know, it takes a bit of time. Um, so yeah, look, check, 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 check. Look, 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 look at that t-shirt got a t-shirt i ordered it i paid for it also given to me um so i thought i'd wear that now whenever i do my my lone wolf streams thanks for uh joining me i'm so sorry i'm late i completely lost track of track of time there's no excuse i have actually been out all day in um the town of rochester which has a castle which some people may have seen the fake castle that was built for the film Ironclad. I went to see the real one today. I haven't had a chance to upload my pictures yet, but I'll, I'll give you guys a quick a quick flash, so to speak, because I'm also without a phone at the minute, and by that I don't mean that the camera's not working in my phone, um, which it is, it's working just fine. But there is the Rochester Castle, the one that appears in the film Ironclad, which also has my friend Jason Fleming, who appears in it. I have a much wider shot of it um, as seen from the river because there's more to it than just that just that structure. There's a there's a slightly nicer, um, longer picture there of the main structure of the castle. Um, and uh, I've got people bing bonging me now. That's uh, Matthew from Australia uh, sending me a message. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so no, no, no worries uh okay cool so i've got to send him a dvd uh tomorrow um when the poster when the post office is open anyway so we are pushing on we are pushing on with we are pushing on with lone wolf um and uh um we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna start book nine at least we're gonna start book nine i don't know how late i'm gonna play because of that i've had uh i've had a long day today um and uh i did want to uh Drinker had a number of new guests on tonight, and I, I did want to check them out, um, have a look at them, and um, really nice people. I've, I've got a couple of them I'm following already. Um, I've also been proofreading my own uh, new book, because I'm publishing all my screenplays. Uh, this is the Paratrooper uh, World War II stuff. May not be of interest to people who are into Lone Wolf, but... Um, there's already two episodes of Paratrooper out um, on Amazon to buy, which is episodes seven and eight. Pretty soon you're going to be able to get episodes one and two, um, and then I'm doing three and four. So I'll gradually be circling back around to seven and eight. Um, five and six have not been written yet. Um, they're two of the ones I haven't done yet, but I have done three and four. So three and four will be being published next and then after that, I will see. I might try and write uh, the missing episodes and see if I can publish the whole lot, which would be quite nice, wouldn't it? Here it is, The Cauldron of Fear. Um, the map is up uh, as my background, but, of course, I don't have a co-host uh, today because I'm doing this later than usual. So if anybody is watching, uh, hello to Jonathan Stark. Thanks for coming in. I saw you on one of my... Uh, August and I had a, oh, that would be August Han, of course, had a blast making the podcast for this book. Lots of stuff I didn't know about. Um, well, uh, Jonathan, if you fancy popping on, if it's not too late for you, you can come on and uh, help me make some decisions. Desert Phoenix, uh, always great to have you here. Just want to thank Desert Phoenix and Melvin, who spotted that I was moderating on Drinker's channel um and clearly i had uh, I lost track of the time um i thought actually it was about half an hour earlier than it was um so i apologize to people for being late david macy loyal to the core always here probably are you not on set tomorrow uh david if you're not thanks for hanging about um now i need to close some windows because i had a load of work open because i'm uh, doing proofreading for paratrooper and co correcting the numerous um, mistakes and just improving a few little lines of dialogue as well because I always like to improve uh, a draft wherever I get the chance and this is the last chance uh, because um, uh, I will be uh, putting the book to publish as soon as this new version um, is up uh, uploaded. Now the other news in case you haven't seen it um, is that I just confirmed the date for my next industry interview with none other than actor Tim Thomason. I know he's not like a massive 
A-list name, but um, he's he's an A-list in my book and um, someone that means an awful lot to me in terms of my own personal journey where films and video rentals are concerned. And I, if, if he was in a video at my video store, I would rent it. So Tim is on the right just here in uh, next to Gene Hackman in Inc Uncommon Valor, which was a great movie that came out in 1983, the first one about rescuing Vietnam vets. Uh, also in that photo, uh, Harold Sylvester, Red Brown, who's another actor I'm trying to track down, the late Fred Ward, uh, the late Patrick Swayze, and uh, I forget the name of um, the actor who played Sailor, but who has now retired from acting, I believe, although I think he's still alive. Um, so I'm hoping to interview Red Brown, who's uh, at the back there, who's another actor that I actually do quite like and was also in my friend Albert Poon's film, The Sword and the Sorcerer. So, um, but we are here to play Lone Wolf. So let's play. All right. So I've got the Cauldron of Fear here. I'm going to put, I'm going to put my physical map in front of my PC screen over here. Uh, and we're back in the Stormlands again. We're, we're in the, the Stormlands, which we visited. Now, if, Jonathan, if you're still listening, oh, I absolutely do love doing these. It, it, was, um, it was an ambition of mine, uh, actually, much earlier in my life. I think in my 30s, I wanted to revisit the books. That's why I never threw my original 10, which I still have here, never threw my original 10 books away. Uh, number 10, uh, the, the, the new edition of Dungeons of Talker has just arrived. That came with my T-shirt. Um, and Of course, I'm not doing these um, streams uh, to spoil uh, the books for those who want to play them um, themselves, and they, they probably shouldn't watch them. It's more about uh, you seeing, in a childlike way, I guess, uh, how much they mean to me. Uh, Corey Cochran, very nice to see you, sir. Thank you so much uh, for coming in. Um, yeah, Jonathan, there's certainly a lot of stuff from the 80s here. Uh, in the cabinet there is the vinyl soundtrack to A Bridge Too Far, which is very rare. Uh, and below that, I have two, well, three uh, cases of vinyl records, all of them movie soundtracks, uh, most of them from... 77 until about 91 i think i stopped buying vinyl around 1990 um and then i do indeed have a lot of films from the 80s uh back there you can see a, it's a little booklet for the fog there which is one of my favorite horrors uh ah but we're getting we're getting sidetracked so let's let's get to lone wolf because i need to uh get my character sheet up because i'm i'm sorry i'm really running behind what i wanted to ask you jonathan what I vaguely remember is that there is one uh, book of Lone Wolf where I have, a, I have a very, very distinct memory of one book that involves a huge battle where you take command of some of the forces on the battlefield. Uh, and it was really well done. I really liked it. It really put you in the scene of the battle where, of course, more you're, you know, most of the time you're kind of on these sort of microcosm missions so to speak. Um, but I, uh, I I really liked the book with the big battle in it. I can't remember which one it was, um, but I'm pretty sure it was a lone wolf book and not a fighting fantasy book. I only had about six fighting fantasy books. I've just acquired a whole load and I've, I've picked up two old editions of um, Death Trap Dungeon and Cry Havoc. I'm, I'm diving off camera because it, it's just occurred to me that I don't have a proper pair of pantaloons on or, you know, comfy trousers. So let me just put those on. Um, so, so you, you can tell how rushed I was today, can't you? So uh, how many have time to put my trousers on <laughs> when I changed and got back in? Um, so I picked up these two old editions of... Um, Death Trap Champ. Yeah. So what I was going to ask you um, is, if I remember rightly, Cauldron is the one with the big castle siege, and I like that. I was. I, I'm debating. I've already talked to August and um, Ben about this. I'd really like to write a standalone 
um, book four, The Lone Wolf World. Not a novel, a game book. Um, and uh, um, they said when they're, when they're looking at doing that, they'll let me know. Because, of course, I'm a novelist. Um, and I've always wanted to write one of these. So, yeah, I picked up a couple of old fighting fantasy ones. I've got about another seven up there. And uh, I plan on playing some of these on the channel. But Lone Wolf has the priority because it's my favourite. They were never quite the same for me. Uh, for fighting fantasy, I liked them. They, they came out first, but they were never they were never quite the same. Yeah, Cauldron has a big battle in it. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, okay. No spoilers though. We don't, I don't want too much information. But yeah. So um, got my Game of Thrones hat here as well. I think I'll keep that off for the moment. Um, right. So, uh, let me get my maps and stuff. So, uh, my, I've got to roll, uh, a D10 for some money and I've got to pick an extra skill. Normally I've done all of that stuff before I start just so we can kind of hit the ground running. I'm afraid cause I'm so disorganized today. Um, unfortunately, uh, uh, we're starting from the very scratch. So we're going to have to go through some minutia nonsense. Also, um, I wasn't able to get anyone to um, co-host with me today because most of my co-hosts on Lone Wolf are English. Uh, I have had Gord King um, come and co-host with me occasionally. So I might just drop him a message in case he's uh, not busy. Uh, are you busy? If not, hit this link. <laughs> He's done it before with me, so he kind of knows what it's all about. And it's funny because he streams, like most other people who've got channels, they stream 3D graphic gaming content. Sleep is for the week. Exactly, RK. That's what I always say. Um, and... Uh, um I'll, I'll look at that in a second jonathan and by the way i don't know if you're aware jonathan but i met joe diva i've got a picture with him i actually played a war game with him in essex in this big guy's house i think that guy has also passed away now um a guy called john i don't I can't remember his surname he had a huge war games uh I guess you'd call it a war games bungalow next to his main house and then next to the bungalow was a huge shed uh, in which he um, built uh, War Games Terrain. So, um, yeah, there was quite a lot going on. So I normally have a co-host who helps me make decisions. So I'm just going to put this out there. If there's anyone in chat, probably not Jonathan, because he knows his way around these things a bit too much. Um, if there's anyone in chat who fancies coming on um, and playing, sort of questing the game with me, so to speak, um, then you would be very welcome. So um, just sort of let me know in the chat and let me know that you're relatively normal on the on the normal scale. I will accept five out of ten uh, on that on that scale. Um, then yeah, just uh, give me a shout because uh, I prefer to do these. I, I like doing these with a co-host, but um, uh, we shall see. Uh, we shall, we shall see if Gord King may pop on. Um, and uh, um, hang on. I might let my friend Lady Gravemaster, if you want to come on my stream now. Here's the link. She might come on. These guys both stay off camera, which actually works quite well um, for this sort of thing. Although, of course, normally we have Melissa and her two growling dogs. Uh, but she has an acting job on at the moment, and the dogs are actually on set with her. So, <laughs> you know, can't compete with that, really, can I? Can't compete with that. So we're going to get the die rolling, going to get the die rolling app up and going. Um, so let's let's get that up, and I want to get the big map up on the Lone Wolf site. I'm currently in the process of changing my phone number at the moment because I've changed service providers. I forgot what a massive headache 
that's going to cause me because I've now got to contact my bank. And, you know, they, they send you those security texts when you buy stuff online. And I was going to pre-order some Lone Wolf books today. And then I realized I couldn't do that because the texts would go to my phone and my phone is not working. And so it's all kind of a bit annoying right now. A bit of an annoying time. Some sound on the Lone Wolf. Uh, whoa, 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 what's going on here? There's lots of audio on this uh, on this website. I don't remember there being audio on this website before. Can people hear that music? Because I'm a bit worried about the copyright, if you can. Uh, I think I better mute myself for a second. Hold on. Well, I just muted myself, but um, let me know if you can hear this music in the background, which is uh, playing off the Lone Wolf site. Uh, I don't know where it's cut. I don't remember there being music on the site. Maybe that's something that new that they've added. It, it does sound all a bit hey, nonny, nonny. If you guys can't hear it, that's good. But I think I will probably do without the big map today um, and uh, maybe just use the, the little one. Oh, the dice app is, looks different as well. The dice app's changed as well. Oh, God, what's going on with all this stuff? Okay, well, cool. The dice app still looks good, so that's fine. We just want a D10. Roll a D10. There we go. Yeah, that looks good. All right, good. All right, so um, we are all ready to go. I'm just going to grab that, and excellent. So, okay, I'm going to share screen with... Um, uh, my die rolling at first, actually, because I'm going to roll for 10 gold uh, crowns, I believe they're called. Gold crowns. Put that down there. Can't see what I'm doing. Too many windows open. It's, oh, so disorganized today. And I've got eight people watching. I've got more people watching today. That's the normal. Maybe it's because I'm screening later, I think. Though I've had I've had 15 on, on Lone Wolf before, which has been quite nice. So... Uh, I like to do all my die rolling in public. Uh, so here is our die rolling app. Uh, and we are going to um, roll to see how many crowns I get to in addition to my purse as it currently stands. Oh, look at that. I've got 10. Nice. So um, uh, thank you for that, guys. Uh, thank you for that, RK. Glad you can't hear that, the hey, nonny, nonny. But I think we'll... I mean, you know, if I need to go to it, to it it's good to know, but it's a bit distracting for me. It's blaring in my ear hole. Um, so I got 10 gold crowns. So um, just for the benefit of people who haven't seen my character sheet, I currently have 12 gold crowns back home, 40 on me, and also 60 Luna um, uh, worth of, which is a, a slightly different currency that I picked up. So what I'm going to do is, um, having gone back home, I'm going to incre increase my bank account back home to 22. I'm going to keep keep the number of gold crowns on me as 40. I'm going to reduce the number of Luna on me to 30. And I'm going to um, keep 30 Luna at home. Actually, I'll share this character sheet with you. By the way, this character sheet is very, very basic. It's just on a note on my Mac. If anyone uh, would like to uh, create me a really cool, groovy one, uh, please feel free to uh, drop me a message, and I'll, I'll certainly plug your artistic skills and technical skills because I'm I, this sort of stuff is beyond me. So, um, so my my little character sheet is here. Um, this is <laughs> a whole load of stuff on the on the left side there. Um, but this is, um, uh, my, you know, my endurance, uh, which with collective bonuses is, is 30. Uh, we're restarting the mission. So of course it's, it's back to 30. Um, and then I've got a combat skill, um, or a base combat skill of 18, um, with, which is also with collective bonuses is at 30. These are my old skills, and then I've got some of the new ones towards the bottom. So I've got all the original uh, Kai skills, which don't really seem to be of much use anymore. I've got to pick a new one. Um, I ha I'm sensing that there's going to be quite a bit of fighting in this, and we're going to be in the mists of civil war. Um, 
Now I can also complete some circles. So if I if I complete, oh I got I've got animal, I've got curing, and I've got animal control. So I have actually in, I've completed the circle of light, which uh, increases my endurance points by four. I did not. Do you know what? I think I think I'd have, I should have had those last time, and I didn't add that. I didn't check to see if I'd completed any of the circles. So I better, better let's just make a little thing for that as well. See, sorry, this bit's all a bit boring. Um, I normally do all this before I come on. So um, circle of light. Uh, actually, let's just put this as a little heading. Circles completed. And then underneath that, I'll just put circle of light um, plus four EP endurance points. That takes my endurance up to 34. And we'll make a little note of that there. That, that that's also a bonus plus four for circle of light. I'd like to keep all these things correct, uh, Jonathan. Uh, Ak, you use a Mac? How horrible! I have a PC right next to the Mac, uh, Desert Phoenix. I do have a PC. It's my old Warhorse computer. It's got more files and work files on it than trust me. You've had hot dinners, but I just uh, I can't. Um, I can't write books on it because I write my books in Vellum and uh, my Vellum is the software I use to write my novels like Diamonds in the Sky. Go on to the Diamonds in the Sky website. In fact, I'll, I'll type that in. Diamonds in the Sky book series dot com. Yeah, if you go on there, um, you can read about my science fiction series. Um, that's why I bought a Mac. I bought a Mac especially to write novels because I didn't like the PC novel writing software and I didn't want to write my novels in Word. I wanted something that would format them professionally for me and it works very well for me. Um, but what it doesn't do is gives me the ability to uh, um, uh, create a cool character sheet. A powerful warrior you are, yes. Mm. Uh, indeed. <laughs> Apparently so. Yeah. Mm. Do or do not. There is no try. Okay. I'm not great at doing the Yoda voice. So I, I need a bit more wine. All right. Um, so I've got my backpack items here. Uh, I'm not using the fillet at the moment. Um, now you can take some extra things uh, before you start your mission. I still need to pick a new skill and see if I've completed any other um, circles. Um, I have one of my other. Let's go back to the skills. I haven't got invisibility. I have got pathmanship. I haven't got hunt mastery. Um, I haven't got nexus. Um, now I could use my weapon mastery with my bow. My bow has already got a plus three, and if I go for a weapon mastery skill with the bow. That will give my, when I'm using my bow, that will give me a plus six, which is not a bad idea. Um, yes, Desert Phoenix, if you wish to create a character sheet for me uh, and send it to me on Google Docs through my Mac, please do so. Um, so, um, so actually, I think I'm going to pick a weapon skill because for some reason I have a feeling that the bow might be useful in this uh thing as i might end up defending a castle so i'm gonna pick um a weapon skill again so this is um let me just put weapon bow plus three so i'm not adding one of the kind of the funky jedi type skills with me now that means uh my combat or um skill with the bow or with bow so I'll just put it here. So I've always got all these things ready, so I don't have to ch check them. Is 18 plus 3 for the bow's magical properties takes it to 21. With with the plus 3 skill is is 24, or 20 with bow, 24. Okay, let me just put that in block capitals. Okay, 24. 24, get it right, Lance. 24. All right, okay. I don't think I need to share this anymore. Take that down. Uh, but I do want to share the map. So let's keep the map up. 
So if I had a co-host, we'd have to map up all the time, which is useful. Um, fun fact. Gold crowns are primarily minted in Cassion, just west of the desert of Vasagonia. Then they are put into distribution around the Magnum. More of those from Jonathan shortly. Um, so, all right, let's uh, let's 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 get into it. Let's let's start the game, guys. Let's start the game. So, uh, and again, if anyone's watching and you fancy being my co-host, you want to come on. Uh, drop me a little message in the chat, maybe with a Twitter profile or something where I can message you privately and I could always give you the link to jump on the stream. You don't have to come on camera. If you want to just be a voice and help me with some decisions, you do not have to come on camera. That's absolutely fine. Um, not everybody has a great face for radio like me, so uh, I'm, I'm perfectly okay uh, with you uh, keeping your camera off. Now, this is where we're going. We're going to the Republic of Nari. So those are the banners of the various houses, as it were, a bit like Game of Thrones. Um, but we are going to the Kingdom of Nari. I think we might be going. We've been to Tahu before, I believe. Um, but anyway, let's let's have a quick look and see what it says at the beginning. So um, the story so far. OK, I'm not going to read all of this out. Because if I do, I won't have any voice left to play the game. So, blah, blah, blah. Now, I've been on a quest to find law stones. So, in other words, I've been on a quest to find a thing, to find a thing, to find a thing. Law stones are these powerful gems that were created by the elders. They're kind of like the Jedi, the Kai. Um, each stone has a specific magical property. When you touch it, you absorb its knowledge. The stone disappears and it kind of becomes part of you. I found two of the stones so far. There are four of them. And um, although your quest, your quest has taken you far from your northern homeland, following in the footsteps of the first Kai Master, etc., etc. Et now, when they got back, they held victory uh, things in my honor. Um, in Elysian, the capital of Desi, which is not where I am right now, uh, you were tutored in the histories of Magnamund and received lessons in law that you would have learned from Kai Masters if only they had survived the murderous Dark Lord attack on the Kai Monastery 11 years ago. So it's 11 years in the timeline since I started this mission, effectively, since I escaped from the monastery. So my character is now 11 years older. Um, so, uh, yeah, Jonathan, you'd be very, uh, very welcome to come on for a future episode, mate. Please do. Uh, please do that. So, uh, Okay, Desert Phoenix might try it, but Desert Phoenix, I need, I need a, uh, I need a link like a Facebook account or a Twitter account or something where I can drop you a private message, mate, and then I can send you the link if you want to try coming on. Uh, let's have a look. So, um, yeah, bad news. After five years, the battle for the throne of Helgad has finally been won by this new Dark Lord called Narg. I think it's pronounced Narg. Do you, Jonathan? Can you confirm Narg? Uh, G N A A G. I think Nag, Nag, Ganag. I don't think it's Ganag. I'm going to go with Nag. Um, Nag. Yeah. Okay. Nag. Nag. Nag sounds a bit naff. That sounds like you're moaning. So swiftly did the Gaiac legions grow in numbers that the elder Mackay ceased their counselling and arranged for you to begin once more the search for the third law stone. Okay. So this mission is about finding the third, the third law stone. Um. Gunag rhymes with snag. Yeah. Yeah. So Gunag, Gunag, like nag, like to nag someone. Oh, to nag. Okay. So uh, nag. Okay. All right. The Dark Lord nag. Nog. I prefer nog. Okay. Nag. We'll go with nag. The Dark Lord nag then. So several lands after brief but futile resistance have been completely overrun by this new Dark Lord's armies and others have surrendered without fight. So that's not very good, is it? Um, sadly, there are others who chose to betray former friends and allies by joining the Dark Lord's cause in the misguided hope that they would share in the spoils of victory. One such land was Vasagonia, a powerful desert empire to the north of Desi. Okay, so they've joined up with the bad baddies. That's not good, is it? Um, I think we might get that big map up again so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Uh, in terms of uh, 
Ah, uh, no worries. Uh, uh, the Gold King can't pop on. He he would, but he's got an early shift tomorrow. So he's done this gaming thing with me before, which is always fun. So, um, yeah, okay, well, never mind. Um, so Vasagonia has invaded the neighbouring ter territories of Kasorn and Calicia, and we're pre preparing to march through the Republic of Inari. That's where we're going. Um, uh, the th to join Nag's Horde, now advancing across the Great Slovenian Plain. So I think um, I think the Slovenian plain is is this area here, um, and I think they did. They were they, Ta, Tahu was under siege, if I remember rightly, in the last book. So um, yeah, so bad bad shit's happening, people. Bad shit's happening. Whilst preparations were being made for your journey, you learned that the Dark Lords had attacked and captured Ruanan. Oh, that's a town that my guys own to the north. So um, we really do need the big map up so you guys can can see, uh, you know, the context of where these places are in the in the, in the in the scheme of the world, as it were, um, in the scheme of the big world. So let me let me get it back up again. Um, oh, the music's hope oh, the music's back again. <laughs> okay. Don't seem to be able to turn it off. I'm sure there must be a way. Jonathan, if you know how I can turn the music off uh, on the main website, which de definitely never played for me before, please tell me. Uh, I wonder if it's an advert. Maybe I can, if, I do, if I do an ad blocker on it, will that, will that stop the music? It, it has. That's good because that's, that's very distracting. We don't want that. All right. Okay. So, I mean, I'm sure it's fun for people that are, checking out the site it's just not fun for me when i'm trying to play the game so here we go so i'm going to stop sharing that for a sec we're gonna we're gonna share the big the big the big map here we go this is the big map okay so um now we are not currently where i've placed us so let, let me move it around a bit just put this one down here. So we we travelled up this this river last time, and we went to um, the swamp of horrors or jungle of horrors, jungle of horrors. So the last mission was to the to the Danag or the Danag, which is here. Uh, we then flew back on a. There's flying ships, by the way. In case you're not up with the technology of the world of Lone Wolf, there are flying ships. We're currently in the Kingdom of Desi here. Okay. This is the kingdom of Vasagonia. Uh, unfortunately, the Lord of Vasagonia died recently. They tried to capture us. They tried to betray us. That was in a book called Shadow of the Sand, which is a great book, book number five in the series. They've attacked the kingdom of Anari. I think they've probably, um, they, they may have overrun um, Tahu. They're also attacking north um, up up through the Ruanan Pike. So they've captured Ruanan and they're coming up through the Ruanan Pike. They're, they're got their sights set on home guard again which is under siege in the first book so um uh and this is the monastery where my my um cash funds are, are stored or they i may have a a, a safe in desi I, I don't think we're gonna we're gonna worry about that too much but um i tend to always just store a little bit of money i don't always run run around with all of it with me so okay, so we're we're going to be going to the kingdom of Anari. So this is where these things fit in the grand scheme of the world. Now this is the map that's on the main um, Lone Wolf website. Oh, I don't have a banner on this today. I need, we need to we need to fix that, don't we? Quickly, let's do that. Um, so disorganized, terrible, isn't it? terrible. Uh, Lone Wolf. Choose your own adventure. Uh, let's just go with book nine. Indiana Jones and the Cauldron of Fear. Okay, so the Cauldron of Fear. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Okay, all right, let's just pop that on there. There we go. So, um, so you can see 
this is this world is vast, man. Okay, uh, one of the things I always really liked about Lone Wolf is the world building, the kind of texture of the world, the uh, um, the little bits of knowledge, um, the fact that in the back of the books there's always a little glossary, which actually, by the way, um, is normally good to read before you go on the adventure because there's little bits of information in the back of the book on things like new monsters and stuff like that, and it's always quite quite useful to read up that information because there's always um there's 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 hints there's clues of things that actually if you read the detail and you take it in um sometimes it will make you make a dec different decision in the book however unfortunately lance wolf um due to his um rather heavy scheduling this week uh, has not had time to properly prepare for this particular mission so lance wolf uh, unfortunately will not be making a detailed study of the rear book of the glossary on this occasion. Um, however, I do have the uh, Jonathan app in the uh, um, chat if I need any advice. All right, so we're, we're going to put our, our main map back up again. This is the this is the book. This is the map that comes with the the book. It's on the inside sleeves. Very nice. Um, and I'll have my dice rolling app at the ready, and I have my character sheet at the ready so i'm just going to pop that over here very good okay good pop that over here so i can see what i'm doing okay all right so um checking on the comments fun fact more of these sky ships have existed since the early days of the elder Mackay. so for anyone not following lone wolf every time you see the word kai or Mackay, just use the word jedi and you you kind of you're visualizing effectively what these guys are uh who are the ones to develop them but the secrets of making them have been mostly lost after the senna's great plague i believe that they're fueled by crystals certain types of crystals the number of sky ships during the time of cauldron of fear are very limited in number which is why huge sky fleets of them don't advance on the forces of darkness yeah that would that would be a bit like the eagles taking the uh, ring to mordor wouldn't it so all right let's get back into the book on the eve of your journey, uh, Bainton informed you that the king has ordered that he and his skyship be placed under your command. He also, um, oh, Bainton was a guy I rescued in the last thing. Um, he also delivered the news. No, he went with me on the last mission, but I rescued him previously uh, in the story. Um, he delivered the news that the king has bestowed upon you the rank of war marshal of the royal estates. That sounds a bit like I'm in charge of the of the park toilets. Um, proudly you accept from Bainden two platinum badges. Jim will fix it for me, clearly. Each crafted in the shape of a blazing sun and affixed to them the collar of your Kai tunic. Bit of a giveaway. I mean, you know, like generals don't, don't wear big hats in battles so they don't get killed. But I'll take it. Thank you very much. Lovely. Um... The honour bestowed upon you lifted your spirits and the news that Bainden will be joining you on your quest greatly allays your fears of the dangers that lay ahead. Um, strange how comments are popping up, but not mine. You know, Desert, I can see this comment, if that's what you mean. Um, the little swamp of horrors. Okay, so... Um, so, okay, here we go. Um... Sorry, guys, and I'm multitasking to the extreme here. Uh, on the eve of your journey, Tahu, the elder Magai, convened a meeting of the High Council. A golden torch was lit and placed in the centre of a great cylindrical council chamber, as is often the case, as a symbol of their hopes and prayers for your success. Hopes and prayers, hopes and prayers. Um, this torch shall burn so long as you, lone wolf, Pursue your destiny along the path of the Magna Chi, says Lord Ramur, speaker for the High Council, before the gathering of elders. You reaffirm your vow to restore the Chi, as if kindled by a sudden gust of wind, the torch flares brightly, bathing the chamber in a vivid golden glow, as one of the elders rose from their seats and intoned their blessing. May the gods, Isha and Chi, protect you on your journey into darkness. Corscon! Who's Corscon? Is that, is that another name for me that I'm not aware of? Perhaps it is. Okay, so now I can take a few extra items if I want. And I think generally what I do is I stock up on some fire seeds 
and I, I replace any arrows that I've lost, uh, and I take some food, and I take some lamp spur. Um, so, now, Jonathan, just correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I can only add one potion of lamp spur to my items at the beginning of my quest. I know I can take a certain number of items from the selection available, but I think I can only take one lamp spur. So if I can take more than one, please tell me. I've already got one, so I'm going to put that up to two. I'm going to increase my number of fire seeds to five, um, and I'm going to increase my number of meals to four. Uh, it depends. The book will say if there's more than one available. Uh, these will restore four endurance points per dose. Yeah, if you discover any potions during the adventure, you'll be formed of their effect. All potions are backpack items. They cannot be drunk during combat. Okay, it doesn't say if there's more or not. Um, it normally says that there's a maximum. Um, I mean, I'm, I'd be quite keen to take some books, say, two potions of lamps for all five meals. Yeah, um... Uh, it doesn't, there's no limit on the meals or, or limit on the potions listed here. Uh, if you think I can take another one, I'm going to have three. Um, but I'm quite happy to. Now, I'm leaving the two sacks of silver nuggets that I somehow procured. I forget when I got those, but I got them. I'm leaving those behind in my um, safe item. If it doesn't have a number, then the number's one. Okay, all right, fair enough. So then it's just one. All right. So I've added just that's what I thought. That's what I thought. It's good that you're here that I can check these things, but I, I have added just one. Um back home, I also have two sacks of silver. Two sacks of silver. I don't know how much that translates to in two sacks of silver nuggets. It would be good to know what that's worth in crowns in case I need to sell them. I'm not taking them with me. So so just so people know, I'm keeping 30 Luna, 22 crowns, and two sacks of silver nuggets in my safe um, some, somewhere else, in the monastery or in Desi. Okay, I am taking the summer sword with me. I have I left it behind on Shadow of the Sand because I didn't want to take it with me on a peace mission. Um, that turned out to be a considerable disadvantage. Okay, here we go. So we're we're on... Number one. It only took 43 minutes to get here, aren't you guys, please? Uh, yeah, I added two meals. I added two meals, Jonathan. I know you can take more than one for sure. I already had two, so I've got four on me. Okay. So, um, so we're currently in Elizan, which on the big map, is in the kingdom of Desi, I believe. Yes, it is. It's the capital of Desi. So we're, in terms of distance, guys, we're a considerable distance to the right of this map. I would say if Anari, if Anari was Los Angeles, I would say that we're probably about the distance of Chicago uh, away from Anari is from LA. That's probably where we are. Lots of Gorka jerky laying about. Yeah, I know, right? Okay, so... Let's have a read. A full moon lights the sky above Elysian on the evening that you begin your journey to Tahu. So I am traveling to Tahu, the, the city which is on the map right now. Uh, its ashen rays glimmer along the polished wooden outriggers that run the length of the hull of the Sky Rider and illuminate the crystal star sign of the summer lending flag as they flutter proudly on the mizzen mast. Okay, I'm going to skip through a bit of this because my voice is going to get knackered otherwise. Um, but basically, I'm on a sky ship that's been given to me by this elder of councils. I've got a crew of dwarves. I've got a captain. I've got Bainden with me, who's kind of like my sort of sidekick, a bit like Robin. Uh, Desert Phoenix has messaged me on Facebook. Let's have a look. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, man. I see your, your – yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got your real name there. Dude, I'll, um quite happy to add you as a friend, actually, because that's my work profile. So well, I'll sort that out at some point um hi let me uh okay desert i'm going to uh what i'm going to do mate is i'm going to drop you the link now look keep keep your camera off buddy you don't need to put your camera on uh i'll drop you the link if you can if you can come and join me now look if dude i know you're a bit of a lone wolf fan so if you know these books backwards i don't want you making the right decision for me constantly but if you're 
If you can't remember them, that's better because I can't remember them at all. Um, okay, so uh, so we're on our way. The crew remember that the voyage. The crew remember that that voyage fondly and are justly proud of the part that they played in the success of that perilous mission. Oh, okay. The crew remember that voyage fondly. Got okay. Well, they're talking about battles past. Take the helm, bosun, and set course for that Nav Navasari. Commands Bainden. I played Bainden as quite posh last time. So I'd be more like, take the helm, bosun, and set course for Navasari. Because he's like sort of Benedict Cumberbatch kind of character. So, um, Band Banadon. Banadon? It's Banadon. I'm a time bandit, quite possibly. Yeah. <laughs> um, swiftly, the lights of Elysian vanish as the Sky Rider speeds away into the night. A mile below the jungle of Desi and the barren peaks of the Zulan Mountains race past beneath the skyship's keel, but in the comforting warmth of Bainden's cabin, this is all sounding a bit, bit dodgy. What, what is my relationship with this guy exactly? Why am I in his cabin? Why don't I have a cabin of my own? Um, so, uh, yes, where, where was I? In the warmth of his cabin, uh, you feel no sensation of movement. Only the hum of the powerful engines. I'm glad I don't feel any sensation of movement. This is good. Um, uh, indicates how rapidly you're traveling. Over a delicious meal of salted beef and spiced fruits, Bainden explains the purpose of your journey to Navasari, a city located over 100 miles south of Tahu. Is Navasari on the map? Let's, have a, let's enlarge that map a bit. Let's have a look. Yes, it is. It's the one that city was under siege previously. Um, so it is south of Tahu. It's on the junction of the rivers there. So I think I went to that city in a previous book, if I remember rightly. I might be wrong, but I think I went there. So I think that's the one that had the big toad in it. Ah, I think Desert Phoenix is with us. Desert, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Dude, welcome to the Outcast Creative Stream for the first time. And it's uh, it's good to have you on because, mate, every time I do a lone wolf stream, you're always there. <laughs> I try. <laughs> uh, no, I appreciate the support, buddy, because my channel is is young and these, these streams are quite niche, but I love doing them. Um, so, you know, I just want to say to you while I, I can speak to you in person, I really do appreciate the support. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we only have a handful of people watching these streams, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you now I'm going to do all 30 books. So um, whilst I live and breathe, my quest to do all 30 books shall continue. All right. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to cut through the waffle of the very detailed description. Um, and, of course, uh, you are aware that I do a lot of silly voices when I'm doing these. So, so try not to laugh too much. You might put me off. Um, so... <laughs> And um, now, now, are you are you familiar with these books, or did you replay play them a long time ago, or or? Um, yeah, I've I've done the first twenty. Okay, but but did you do them a long time ago? Or have you played them recently? A long time ago. <laughs> okay, all right, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so, um, so we'll 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 consult together and and see what we think are sensible decisions. Um, okay, so. Uh, right, so we're, we're basically about to be given an update here uh, 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 on the, the situation of the war. Um, okay, over the delicious meal, Bainton explains, yeah, the purpose of the journey to Navasari. Our enemies are advancing across Magnum and like a tidal wave, destroying all, all before them. Within their path, says the young magician as he points to a map of the continent adorning the cabin wall. Every day a new battle is being fought and every day we lose another town or village to the Dark Lords. Before we venture into Tahu, we must be sure that the city has not fallen to the Dark Lord Nag. So this is Benedict Cumberbatch playing this character. Um, unless we fly straight into a trap. I might, I might mute Phoenix for a second. He's putting me off. He's giggling. Sorry. I know. I just muted myself. I didn't mute you. No, you're right. Um, okay. I'm sorry. So... <laughs> well, I'm, I'm an actor, so this comes quite naturally to me. Uh, making an idiot of myself. Um, okay, mid-morning of the following day, the lookout catches a glimpse of Navasari as the Sky Rider emerges um, from the Yaju Pass. Okay, very good. Um, 
Right now, is he? Is it pronounced Banadon? Is it Banadon or Bainden? Bainden. I pronounce it Banadon. All right, Banadon. I think Banadon sounds cooler. We'll go with that. Banadon takes control of the helm and steers the craft towards the east quarter of the city, landing it on the spacious, spacious roof of a magnificent star-shaped building that overlooks the River Char. A group of dignitaries resplendent in high-necked robes of green and yellow silk greet you on your arrival. This really reminds me of like landing on the landing pad at Cloud City, you know, in um, Empire Strikes Back. Um, there are some of the friends of whom Banadon spoke. Sadly, they recount a grim course of events that have recently befallen their country. In the far north, the town of Reza was destroyed and its people massacred by an army of Gaiax. Where's that? Is that on the map here? Let's have a look. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, on the river. So this town here has been taken out. That doesn't sound good. They swept along the Inari Pass. Okay. And uh, two days later, a similar attack was launched by the Basagonian army against the town of Zila. Uh, I think that's on the bigger map. I don't think that's on this map. Um, at least I can't see it anyway. Uh, no, I think I think that's on the bigger map. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, but I don't think it's I don't think it's on here. No, I think Zila's further up the further up the river. Um, shortly before midnight, the might of the Dark Lord uh, nags uh, Drak Drak How do you pronounce that? Dracarim, Dracarim Horde. Fell yeah, upon, something like that. Yeah, that would that'll do. F fell upon the beleaguered garrison. They fought bravely, but by dawn the following <laughs> day, all that remained of the town and its defenders were an acre of scorched earth and a wagon wagon load of charred bones. The three enemy armies, there's three armies. Okay, it's like it's like it's like the Germans invading Russia. Army group north, south, and center. Three armies are now advancing towards Tahu. Um, President uh, told Tudor, the head of state has ordered an evacu evacuation of all uh, women and children from the capital. It has begun strengthening the city's defences to increase the chances of withstanding the impending siege. When Banadon speaks of your intention to go to Tahu, one of his friends offers a few words of caution. It would be what, unwise to attempt a landing at the capital, my lord, he warns. Heavy bulk throwers have been positioned on every rooftop and tower in case the city is attacked from the air. The Dark Lords captured Sunita in such a fashion, and the Tahuis have learned from their neighbours' misfortune. Skyships rarely visit Tahu these days, which makes it more likely that your craft is going to be mistaken for a hostile attacker. Oh, well, that doesn't sound very good. That was Bob Hoskins playing that character. After long deliberation, you and Bainden decide to leave the Skyrider. Okay, so we've dumped our Skyship then in Navasari and journey to Tahu by horse. Okay. Um... Nolrim's left in charge of the craft. That's the dwarf. If Tahu is besieged uh, and he has not received word from you after two weeks, he's to return to Desi. Okay, fine. Early the next morning, you and Banadan climb into the saddles of two white Narian steeds provided by his friends and set off on a two-day ride to Tahu. Less than an hour after leaving Navasari, you see a long line of wagons approaching. They're escorted by a troop of cavalry and each one is crowded with women and children. Right, we've got two options, and I think I know which one we're going to pick. We can either stop and question this ragtag convoy, or we can ride past them in an arrogant fashion because we're, we're very busy on our urgent journey. I personally think we should stop and question them because they might have useful information. Do you, do you concur? Sure, go for it. Okay, so we've got to go to one, two, six. Okay. Um, yeah, Jonathan says we're all giggling. I know it's just because Desert Phoenix sounds like a gruff dwarf because I suspect he's got a big beard. So, one, two, six. No, I'm not that big. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're still talking about the beard. Right, okay. So, the officer in charge of the mounted escort rides forward to you. He wears a silver Anorian chainmail and a winged helmet embossed with the crest of Tahu. Hail, Captain, says Banadan. Oh, wait, sorry, that's my posh guy. Hail, Captain, says Banadon. Upon seeing his crown-shaped badge, the man narrows his eyes and regards you both with suspicion. I think everybody always regards us with suspicion, no matter where we go in, in this place. Um, he's about to reach for his sword when a woman shouts from the leading wagon, 
Benetton, Benetton, is that you? Your, your companion recognises the woman and returns her friendly wave. Lortha, by the stars, I had not expected to meet you here, he says in a surprised tone. Um, <laughs> feels like he's been caught on the job. The captain relaxes his guard and motions to the wagons to move on, anxious that his entourage not be de delayed any longer in the, on the highway. You can fall in with us or save your reunion till we reach Navasari, he says curtly, and rides on without waiting for a reply. Lortha is the wife of Chibben, a famous Talese magician. He was my mentor when I lived and studied in the city, says Banadan. If you suggest to Banadan that he should talk to this woman, or you can continue on. Well, I mean, if we don't talk to her, it's kind of pointless stopping at the convoy, really, wasn't it? So, <laughs> yeah. So I, I think we should I think we should talk to her. I think it's that's a no brain. I don't think you're gonna disagree with me. Banadan rides alongside the crowded wagon, talks with Lothara. Um uh, these are the last of the evacuees. They expect they expect the enemy to reach Tahu in two days' time. They've already seen Gaiac scouts, and early this morning, a squadron of Kran—that's uh, like Black Riders for anybody who don't know what Kran are—was um, sighted high in the western skies. She advises us to steer clear of a village called Sadara. Steer clear of Sadara. Where's that? Uh, oh, Zila's to the right. So that's been raised to the ground. I see where Zila is now. Um, I was just, I was just thinking if I had the book here, I could. You know. Yeah, I mean, it might be handy for you to have it um, in the in the. Uh, have you got the new editions? Uh, okay, we've lost audio for a sec there. Um, I don't think Sadara's on this map. So I think it's a, because these are towns. Um, if Sadara's a village, it's not going to be on here but she's telling us to avoid it. So uh, note for chat, uh, let's avoid Sadara. Um, you are clearly a foreigner. That's why there is suspicion. And right now there are spies of nag everywhere. That's, by the way, that is actually Jonathan's voice. I, I re-recorded that earlier. Okay, so uh, Benedict hands you a scrap of parchment. It contains a few lines of a Narian script, an address and a signature. You are unable to decipher the note because the Inarian language diverged so long ago from Vasagonian. It's an invitation to stay at Chiba and Lothar's house in Tahu. It may prove useful when you reach the city gate. I bet it will. Let me write that down. An invitation to stay at Chiba and... So that's a special item. Um, uh, in... Are you back? Are you back, Desert? I am back. Sorry about that. That's all right. Have you got the? Have you got a copy of the book with you? No, I don't. Oh, that's okay. Are you, Unfortunately. Do you, still, <laughs> do, do you still have the the old editions, or are you currently updating to the new ones like me? No, I still have the old editions. I have not bought any of the new ones yet. Oh, dude, the the books from book the originals from books like eleven to twenty. They're they're worth a few they're worth a few bucks those editions. Um, okay, so um, in case you didn't get it, we've been given an invitation to stay at, and this is a special item, to stay at Chibben and Lawther's house. Um, I'm hoping that's that's not a house of ill repute. Okay, uh, if you already have the maximum number of special items, you must discard one. I do have the maximum number, which is 12. Uh, I'm going to discard something. I think I'll discard the royal pass from the queen because that's not really relevant because we're not in that kingdom anymore. I'm going to minimize you for a minute. I got to check something. Yep, no problem, mate. Um, I can take you out if you need me to. No, I'm good. I'm just going to check something on my phone. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yep, no problem. All right. Um, no worries. Okay. So we are now. Turning to number 274 for anyone who's got their book and is following. Uh, but you should play it your own way, really. All right, okay, 274. For three hours, you ride without rest along the Tahu Highway. So we're traveling north to the city of Tahu um, on that road from Navasari. Just going to increase the... Uh, uh, 
vision on that there. So we're, we're, we're on this road here. All right, very good. Um, on either side, the tall whispering grass of the Inari Plains stir lazily in the thin breeze. Villages are few, but wherever there are trees, you are sure to find a group of huts nearby. The highway descends along a ridge towards a copse of stunted trees. Here a circle of simple dwellings have been built around a well. As you approach, a bell is sounded and several peasants appear. Yeah, as uh, as Jonathan said, we are strangers. Um each of them holding a basket of assorted wares that they urge you to buy. That's like going around in Africa. Uh, if you decide to examine these wares, turn to 331. If you decide to continue on your way through the village without stopping, turn to 52. Uh, okay, so um, curious to hear what people in the chat are suggesting. Um, our mission does have a sense of urgency, but in my uh, opinion stopping and checking things out is is usually um the best thing to do uh desert are you st are you still with me can you hear me yeah i can hear you i can hear you fine um i've got a, if, if you've are you finished tending to what you were tending to um i i can apparently do it while i can hear you so go ahead uh well we've got a choice to make Stop and examine the wares of the villagers who've come rushing out to sell us pots and pans and God knows what, or continue along the journey. Mm, continue, sure. Um, yeah, my gut is continue, but uh, it could be some kind of ambush. Um, not that I'm afraid of getting into a bit of combat. Um, David Macy's saying, check things out. Um, Jonathan said this in his British Bert from Sesame Street voice. That I've been told that's exactly what you sounded like. That's what I was going for. Um, uh, I, know, I feel like maybe, I don't know, we've got two days, haven't we, to get there. So delays are, are not a good thing. But I do feel like, um, I don't know. Uh, um, I'm going to go with my guest. I'm going to, I'm going to continue on my way. So that's, oh, well, that's 52, not 331, 52. All right. We're going to 52. We're continuing. We're continuing post haste along the road. Okay. As the hour of noon approaches, the rutted highway, uh, rises gently towards a flat topped house near the horizon outside next to the entrance. There's a three legged stand directed over a fire made of gawkers dung. A battered tin pot of soup hangs from the crotch of the stand and several farmhands stand in line waiting for the muddy-coloured liquid. God, that sounds that foul. The smell of the fire is awful and it has to be blown on, blown on ceaselessly to prevent it from going out. Okay, so um, uh, Desert, I'll, I'll mute you for a sec while you're doing your bits and pieces. But if I ask you a question, you can just unmute yourself, I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, my phone nearly fell over. Right. Okay. So, uh, uh, and if you can't unmute yourself, just type in the chat quickly. Um, Jonathan, Jonathan says, everyone was surprised I was American on the podcast. Some of these folks I've known for 20 years, but only online. Of course, August was British. Okay. I actually thought August was British. American before I spoke to him and August by the way for those people watching did an interview on my channel uh, you can find it under industry interviews I think it's number 16 and if you're a fan of Game of Thrones we just had an actor on from Game of Thrones and if you're a fan of 80s movies uh, Tim Thomason is going to be on the channel soon so that's going to be a lot of fun um, all right so the smell of the fire is awful and it has to be blown uh on ceaselessly to prevent it from going out close to the house there's a dirt track that branches off from the main highway and disappears to the west the signpost it's wooded crack and twisted points along this track it reads tahu 95 miles um but we're coming up from navasari so how can that be um that would be going this way which would be incorrect so i think that I think that sign is, um, I'm going to unmute Phoenix 
Uh, there we go. I think that sign is wrong. Um, okay, here are the options, but I, I, it's asking me if I have the Magna, Magna Chi Discipline of Pathmanship. I do. Um, the other options are follow the track, choose to question the farmhands, or continue along the highway. Well, I'm going to see what my pathmanship abilities tell me first, because that may well minimise uh, my choices. Immediately you sense that the signpost is pointing in the wrong direction. Well, I know the difference from west to north, so I could have told you that. Tahu lies to the north, yet this signpost is pointing you towards the river Churdus to the west. If you decide to ignore the signpost and continue along the highway, turn to 318, or do you wish to question the farmhands? Do we want to question the farmhands, Desert Phoenix? Um, sure, maybe. I'll find out what see what they know. All right. Two five two. I say, peasants, what 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 news from the north? Okay, so like most Anarian peasants, and they are peasants. These farmhands are plain and simple, simple folk. They've heard nothing of war in the north and know nothing about the Dark Lord armies. I know nothing of war. I know nothing about the armies. They say, all they're able to tell you is that a great many wagons carrying the rich city folk have travelled the road to Navasari in the last ten days. They'd be happy to share their humble meal of corn with you, um, but the smell of the dung fire <laughs> um, has destroyed your appetite and you refuse their offer politely. No, thank you. Um, Bainden, who's been talking with the owner of the house, returns his horse and nods at the signpost. It's pointing the wrong way. A few days ago, one of the Takus rag wagons ran into it and nobody bothered to fix it. With a wave, the farmhands bid you farewell. You are now hungry, and you must eat a meal or lose three endurance points. Okay, so my meals are now down to three. Desert, what part of the uh, what part of the states are you in? Are you in Arizona by any chance? Because with a name like Desert Phoenix, it feels like you should be. Um, no, actually, I'm in Washington State. Uh, my handle, Desert Phoenix, I came up with while I was deployed in Iraq. Oh my God! You're a you're a vet. Thank you for your service. Um, you're yeah, welcome. That makes that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, I I have I have a huge number of friends who are vets. So, uh, both in America and uh, in the UK, from especially from British Airborne uh, Forces, because I that's my big area of interest. And uh, in case you haven't spotted it, I've got a, a massive number of um historical uh, war games on my, my shelf here. There's a couple of science fiction games, but there's loads of games on Battle of the Bulge, Normandy, Barbarossa to Berlin, the invasion of Crete, lots of stuff to do with World War II, a few American Civil War, and so I'm, I'm a massive, massive history history guy. Um, what I section did... of the book, what section, what page of the book or section of the book are we in? So we are now on... Um, the section that you're reading right now. Yeah, 318. Five miles along the highway, you reach another junction. Have you found the book? Um, I'm going to try and see if the, the, the online ones through Project Aeon are, will coincide with what you're reading. Yeah, I mean, check, try that try that out and see if that works. They are, um, uh, they, the, they are the original versions. Uh, as opposed to the updated ones, but we can always see if, if it diverges because I know a lot of it is pretty similar. I think most of the core numbers are the same. Um, and this one. So, what are, how does how does this one start again? Um, well, this is book nine. Do you mean? No, I mean like no, I mean that this this section. How does the section start? Oh, sorry. Okay, so the number is three one eight, and the first line of dialogue is five miles along the highway. You reach another junction. Where yeah, cart... that's that's what I'm seeing. Okay, cool. All right. Well, stick with that with me. Uh, where a cart track bears off to the west, a whitewashed stone marker by the side of the road says, "Sidara five miles." Better get the map back up again. Um, quick look. Sadara five miles. Don't think that's on here. Oh, that woman said, avoid the, uh, avoid the village of Sadara. So if you want to follow the cart track to Sadara, 
turn to 45. If you decide to stay on the highway to Tahu, go to 145. I say we avoid Sadara. All right, 145 it is. Yeah, because that was the one useful piece of information we got out of talking to Bannadon's ex-lover or whoever she was. Um, so, 145. Okay, big section of text, which I'll abbreviate in my description. The afternoon passes swiftly as you ride across seemingly endless miles of treeless grassland. You stumble upon no village nor hamlet and spend hours listening to Bannadon's account of recent events of Summerland and the Last Lands. Yeah, I bet I do. I bet I fall asleep as well. Three years have passed since you were last in the land of your birth, and you are hungry to hear that all... Oh, I'm, apparently, I'm very keen to hear everything that's transpired since then. My apologies. It's an hour past sunset, and the night is drawing its black cloak around you when you see a flickering red light on the road ahead. It is the village of Chardy, which I don't think Chardy's on the map. Uh, yeah, these are towns. These are these are all towns that are on the map. These are not villages. So villages, I don't don't think are on the map. Uh, you decide to stay overnight, and as soon as you've stabled your horses, you enter the tavern and ask for the price of a room. The tap room is surprisingly quiet. It's full of villagers and farmers. They're a sullen crowd, content to see, sit in silence and brood over their beers. Okay, um, Gayak Guyuk, the tavern owner. Guyuk, the tavern owner. Greets you with a nervous nod of his shiny bald head. All right. Quartzly, he shows you to a table. There's Your no table, bars. Sir. <laughs> no, tiles or, no bars or counters in the Narian taverns. It's all tables, long banqueting tables. He gives you an uneasy smile when he answers your inquiry about a room. Single room with a bed. That would be 12 Luna each. Okay. Now, I have some Luna. 12 Luna equals three gold crowns. So, um... But I've actually got some Luna on me as well. I've got uh, I've got 30. So I'm just going to get rid of some of my Luna, actually. So I'm going to pay for 12 of that. That goes, takes that down to 18. All right. So I pay for a room. If you have enough money to pay for a room, turn to 34. Okay. I hope this isn't like book two where, you know, you go into the hayloft and then you get killed. That was, that, that was a really annoying glitch in that book. I, I did actually bring it up in the group. I said that's a, a loop that unless you've got money to pay for a room, you die. And I, I, I thought that was a bit naff. Um, that's my only complaint of the series so far. So, all right. Guy gives you a key to your room and offers you both a glass of lo lovka on the house. I'm guessing that's like vodka. Gratefully, you accept and down the warm liquor in one gulp. Okay, I'll do that for real. You notice that at the far end of the table, a man sits with his two young sons. They appear to be gambling with a group of farmers seated opposite, although you can see no money changing hands. If you wish to move along to the table to sit next to them, I sense uh, an opportunity to win some cash here. Turn to 339. If you choose to engage Guyuk in conversation... Turn to 268, or you can order some food and go to 88. Um, I don't know. Are you greedy or are you hungry? <laughs> um, well, I just ate. I, I literally just ate a meal. Um, I don't know. I think the barman probably would have the most info. He's, he's here all the time. Um, or, we could, or we could potentially engage in some gambling. Um, I, don't, I, I won't order some food yet because I suspect that option will come again. Um, what do well, you this is up to you, Lance Wolf. <laughs> it's up to me, Lance Wolf. Okay, cool. All right, uh, I'll I'll talk to the barman. Two six eight. Two six eight. Let's 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 go to the the barman. Did you like my avatar? It's it, it looks um suspiciously like uh um. Hang on, if I turn my camera off, you can see it, it looks suspiciously like Legolas, but it's got my head on it. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody did that for me on a birthday card. Um, I've actually got me as an X-Wing pilot as well. They just did on another card recently. This actor called Jake Francis that I've worked with a few times. And uh, he's always sending me funny cards each year. He did one of me uh, with me as Yoda. And he's actually he actually printed it on a mug. And I've got a mug with like Lance Yoda on it. Or Loda, as I call him. Okay, Gaiac is a nervous and jittery sort of man. 
So we're on 268 now. He's afflicted with all manner of ticks and twitches. <laughs> um, and he's given to worrying about anything and everything. Recently, his condition has worsened in the light of the events in the north. It's not difficult to understand why. Oh, what's to become of us? Where will it end? He mutters, uh, wringing his pudgy hands and casting his eyes to the rafters. Every day for the last two weeks, wagons filled with women and children have been leaving to over the south. Yet the Senate tells us nothing's wrong. We should go about our business and not concern ourselves with city affairs. Well, I'm not fooled. I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not fooled. They're keeping us in the dark about what's really happening. Now I'm going to wait around and suffer the consequences. I'm closing it up and moving out by the end of the week. If you gentlemen will and take some friendly advice, you'll do the same. Okay, so he's clearly, clearly panicked. Someone in the tavern is calling for more, more Lovka. Uh, before you can question Gayak further, he snatches up a bottle and scurries away to sort out the de demanding customer. If you now wish to order some food, you can do that, or you can retire to your room. So I've lost the opportunity to talk to these other people, but that information was useful, I guess. Um, food or room? Mm, I just ate, so... <laughs> yeah, I did just eat. Not that... Well, mind you, that was... Technically, there was, then there was a big description. I think that was quite a few hours ago. So it probably is time for, a, for another meal. I'm always suspicious when food gets offered to me because it, it, on three occasions it's been poisoned. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right, let's do room 156. You're killed by your assassin in a, an assassin in your room. Your journey ends here. Okay, the room <laughs> overlooks the courtyard and stables. So 156 this is. It's small yet surprisingly clean and comfortable. You sleep well. But you're rudely awoken at dawn by a clang of a brass bell. Gaik's wife is walking around the courtyard, ringing for all. Daybreak, daybreak, all awake, she cries, sounding remarkably similar to him. Um, <laughs> her voice is only slightly less piercing than the bell. Quickly, you watch. I should try out my acting skills. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect that you're better at a rifle uh, than I am, especially with these glasses. Um... Dress before gathering your equipment. You head for the stables. Bannadon's already there, having risen before dawn uh, to prepare the horses. That's you. You see, you're you're the military man. You've got up early. You're already ready to go. Um, <laughs> I'm the I'm the casual guy, just uh, sort of taking my time. The sky's cloudless. The air's warm. As you ride out of Chardy, Chaddy, Chaddy. Okay, we're again not on the map. Um, open grassland stretch before you broken occasionally by whitewashed farm buildings and peasant dwellings. It's noon when you arrive at the Forest of Standing, um, which, again, doesn't appear to be on this map, at least not that I can see. No, I guess it's not that, not that big a forest then, because this, this is the Duraga Forest. So I guess it's just a forest on the, uh, along this road somewhere. Uh... Banadan recalls a local legend that the Black Zakan of Vasagonia once came to wage war on the defenseless inhabit inhabitants of Fia, who had no army. The besieged people offered up prayers of the goddess Bishar, who was sufficiently moved by their plight to cause the wicked Vasagonians to become petrified right where they stood, clad in full armour and clasping, clasping their weapons. It strikes you that the Fians may very soon have cause to pray for Ishtar's help a second time. A mile beyond the village, you see a cloud of dust on the highway ahead. If you have the Magna Chi discipline of hunt mastery and have reached the rank of Principalen, turn to 69. Now, I'm not sure I have that skill. Let me just check. I do not. I don't have that skill. Um, I'm not sure what my rank is now. You go up a rank every time you do a new book, right? Yeah. So... Actually, so I just let me check what my rank is. Um, but I need to have both of them. So I, I, I don't think that's any good in this situation. But I, I do need to know what my rank is. So um, I. Yes, I, I am on. I am a principal. Prince, prince, whatever. Principalin. Um, I think I might even be one rank higher than that. Um, but I'm definitely, I'm definitely at the level of six. That's that's sure, that's definitely definitely true. But I do not have hunt mastery, and it says and, so you need to have 
um, both of those. So we go. We have to turn to two four zero. Two four zero. Uh, two four zero. The dust cloud grows bigger, and the rumble of hoofbeats can now be heard drifting across the open plain. Twenty lightly armored riders approach. Okay, what news from the north? It's like that scene out of uh, Two Towers. Their lances bearing blue pennants embroidered with the arms of Tahu. Their faces are stern and unsmiling. Riders of Rowan, or riders of Tahu, what news from the north? Their sergeant makes a signal and the horsemen change formation. They draw up and circle around you. This is exactly that scene. Um, uh, state your business here, bellows the sergeant. Why do you ride to Tahu? But first you're suspicious of their identities until your basic Kai sixth sense confirms these men are genuine Anarian rangers. Now, okay, we've got three options here. If you wish to tell the sergeant your real reason for riding to Tahu, turn to 279. If you p possess an invitation and wish to show it to him, turn to 136. We do have that invitation. If you demand to know, by what authority do you hinder my passage to the capital, turn to 343. Um, I don't think we want to choose the rude option. Yeah, no. What are you? Do, but do we want to use? Do we want to say the mission, or do we want to show them the invitation? Well, if I've got the invitation. I might as well use it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think. I think keeping our mission a little clandestine um, is probably better. One three six. Let's 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 show the invitation. The burly sergeant snatches the parchment from your hand and studies it carefully. Without raising his head, he asks how two Northlanders came to possess a personal invitation to one of Tahu's most respected households. I should say what Frodo says, and our, our business in Bree is our own. <laughs> when Bannadon explains your meeting with Lothar and how he was once a student at Jaban, her husband, yada, yada, yada. Okay, stay on the highway and make sure you reach Tahu by sunset, he says. <laughs> Enemy scout. <laughs> we echoing. Oh. No, I was just trying to. I was just trying to read some of it. Just kind of be like a second voice. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, go for that. You should absolutely do that. Do do the next line. Enemy scout. <laughs> Enemy scouts have been sighted in the hills south of the capital. If you're not inside his city walls by nightfall, he. <sighs> he draws his finger quickly across his throat. <laughs> yeah, so it'd be like if you're not in, he'd do that. <laughs> I don't know what accent that was, but it definitely could be this country's accent for sure. You thank him for his, <laughs> you thank him for his advice and watch the scene his troop wheel away and ride south. I mean, they're, they're riding away from the battle, so I'm not sure what's going on there. You pocket the invitation and glance apprehensively at Bannadon uh, before pressing on with your journey to the north. So we're going to two one three. Yeah, I forgot you've got the text in front of you, so that's actually quite handy. You can can pitch in um, two one three. Okay. All right, what's the time? Let me check. All right, I'm good to go for about another 30 minutes. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. All right, so I'll probably I'll probably wrap it up around the hour. I'm I'm determined to have at least one battle before we uh <laughs> I may need I may need to dash for a, a P before then, but uh Yeah, just uh, make sure to mute yourself. I'll tell you what, well, let's let's get let's let's read out this next thing. We're on two one three, and uh, whilst I put the uh, uh, options before you, um, then we can... I think it's not an option. I think I'm just turning to another number, actually. In the late afternoon, you see the Tahu Hills. They appear like a mirage on the horizon, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and then you follow the highway as it ascends towards the mouth of a hill pass. A stone watch guard tower guards the entrance to the hills, and a cluster of white watch huts lie huddled around its base. If you have the magnified discipline of pathmanship and have reached two literary or higher, turn to 160. I do. So um, I won't dash to the loo yet. Hold on. 160. Let's, 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 get, let's get a choice before us and then I'll, I'll rush to the bathroom. You, you tingle with a premonition of danger. You, you are sure that the watchtower and the huts conceal an enemy lying in ambush. You tell Bannadon your fears and he looks ahead, his, his keen eyes narrowing. The pass is dark within the gathering dusk and he does not detect anything unusual about the settlement, except that it appears deserted. If we avoid the pass, 
we have to make a wide detour and rejoin the highway at a place deeper in the hills, he says. Um, even if we don't get lost, we'll be lucky to reach Tahu before nightfall. Right, now, in my experience, when you sense an ambush, if you ignore that warning, the next section of the book normally says, your adventure ends here. So um, I think we should avoid the settlement and make the wide detour. What do you think? Probably be a good idea. Okay. Well, I'm going to dash to the bathroom uh, before we make that decision. Two seconds. Don't forget to mute yourself. <laughs> By the way, to the Phoenix, my uh, my late father was a uh, was a runner for the Danish resistance in uh, World War Two. So I'll, oh, wow. I'll tell you that whole story. Actually, I'm going to do a stream about him because I've got a whole load of photos. Um, so I'm going when you see um when you see a thing that says a stream about my dad and I, I'll put his name up. I'm going to do a whole stream and I'm going to show all the photos that he took because he travelled round um europe after uh, world war ii and these pictures are amazing they're of a time that no longer exists um because he, he bought a camera bought a camera at a very early age um so anyway right so the choices before us were avoid the settlement or gallop into the past despite a risk of ambush well i think we're going to avoid it right yeah okay so we're going to go three three five now i'm curious to see if the other option is an automatic death. I, I suspect it is. So I'm going to have a quick look just for fun. But we are choosing to go 335. I've only died once so far in the book, which was in the death loop. Um, so if you decide to ignore your ambush senses... Um, yeah, okay, you do get ambushed, and then you have to pick a random number, and it all sounds pretty horrible. Okay, all right, so we, we, we've avoided that. I mean, I'm keen for a fight, but I'm not that keen. All right, stones, so we're on 335, okay? So stones rattle beneath your horse's hooves as you skirt the slopes of the Tahu Hills. Nearly an hour slips by before you happen upon the mouth of a gorge that offers you a shorter route north. You enter and ride along a dried-out watercourse. It winds for a mile between turrets of dull-coloured rock before rising steeply into the hills. At the midway point, a small stone hut sits on top of an overhanging gorge. Candlelight flickers at the solitary window, and a wisp of wood smoke rises from the chimney. Investigate the hut or press on. Hmm. It's getting night time, so may need to stop and rest, rest anyway. Yeah, I'll give it a shot, I guess. Yeah, let's go and investigate it. You can take the back, I'll take the front kind of thing. We'll, we'll you know, <laughs> we'll go in Special Forces style. <laughs> okay, tap on the shoulder and all that. You dismount and give Bennett and the reins of your horse before approaching the door of the hut. I don't give him the reins of my horse. He specifically takes the back door. Okay, anyway, with the tip of your weapon, you raise the latch and push it open. Okay, so, yeah, we're kind of armed and ready. That's good. Wary of what may lurk inside. The hut seems to be empty. It's furnished with a table, a bed and a chair, and a saucepan full of foul-smelling broth simmering on a grate of fire well charged with freshly cut logs. If you have the magnified discipline of deviation, I do have it. There you uh, go, adding extra letters again. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 and then you've got to search the hut more thoroughly or leave the hut and press on. But I've got the skill, so we'll... we'll <laughs> Yeah. Um, you Sorry, I'm just giving you shit. <laughs> nah, man, you're good. I've got a good, I've got a robust sense of humour, so you can give give me all that you want. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I like this, Jonathan. Bathroom with Lone Wolf, Lance Wolf. You detect no movement. Yeah, it was just a number one, uh, uh, Jonathan. So, um, right. 
here's what we find out. We detect that someone is hiding in the cellar. So this is one, four, three for you, Phoenix. Um, All right. It's located directly below where you are now standing. Access to this hiding place is via a trap door in the far corner of the hut, close to the fireplace. If you choose to open the trap door and demand the person shows themselves, turn to 206. If you, if you want to push the bed across the trap door, thereby sealing it, turn to 225 or ignore the trap door and search the hut. We're not going to ignore it. So we've either got a demand that they come out or trap them. Well, they can't be too hostile if they're hiding from us. Um, I think, should we demand they come out? Yeah. Rather, rather than be aggressive. Okay, let's do that. We are supposed to be sort of Jedi-like and, and noble. A minute passes before the lurker shows himself. It is a hunchback old man dressed in rags with thin grey hair and a wrinkled face which bears the impression of a lifetime's poverty. It is Desert Phoenix who has joined you on the stream. No, two eyes clouded with cataracts stare up at you from the dark and dusty hole in the ground. Take what you will, but please spare my worthless life, he pleads. Nothing to fear from me. I'm an, I'm an old yeah. man. Okay. That's you. That's That was that was long off, not him. Oh, was it? Okay, all right. Uh, you have nothing oh, yeah. to fear from me, old man. Oh, he yeah. Replied, yeah, let me help you out of this hole. There you go. See, look, this guy knows what he's doing better than me. This is as much as good, <laughs> good I've got you on here. Okay. <laughs> so saying you take hold of his scrawny arms, you lift him with ease, for he weighs no more than a young child. He hobbles over to the fireplace, stirs the broth with a wooden spoon. She keeps on a string around his neck. He offers you some of the smelly gruel, but you refuse politely. If you have a meal in your backpack and wish to offer it to the old man, turn to 271. If you do not have a meal or you do not wish to give it to him, you can leave the hut. No, let's give him a meal, I think. Offer him some decent food. I think so. That you know, my, This guy's got to have something useful. So I think we should, we should offer him some food. So uh, the number of meals in my backpack is now reduced down to two. I do have the skill of hunting, um, which I believe you can kind of use. Um, yeah. great, great, gratefully, he accepts your offer and he adds the food to the broth that is bubbling on the grate. So, Jonathan, if you're still listening on the stream, here's a, here's a, a rule question for you. Um, can you only use the skill of hunting when it states that you can use it, or if you're in, a, in an area of natural countryside or woodland that is not desert and you're requested to eat a meal, but you're in an area where you know you could hunt and get food, can you say, ah, oh, but I will use the skill of hunting, or does it specifically have to say that you can use it? Just a question. So, okay, so he adds the food to the broth that is bubbling. Oh, God, he, he's tipped my food into his stinky, stinky <laughs> broth. He's nearly blind, but he knows every inch of these hills as well as he knows his own hut. And he offers to show you and Banadan a shortcut to Tahu. If you choose to accept his help, turn to 37. I think we should. I think he's he's not going to turn out to be an evil goblin, is he? I don't think so. Um, so I think we should. Yeah, yeah, you think so? Yeah, well, yeah, sure, why not? All right, the hermit takes you back into the gorge and leads you to a place where a massive outcrop of rock overhangs a tangle of bushes and foliage. Hidden behind this leafy cover is the entrance to a cave. A rivulet of fresh water trickles from the cave mouth and the sound of constant dripping echoes from its depths. Follow the straight path through the cave. Do not stray from it, so stick to the path. Okay. Soon you will emerge from the hills and see Tahu before your very eyes. Godspeed. See? It's worth doing. 282. Now, there's going to be an option... It's a stray from the path. I'm promising you that's coming. It's coming up right now. So we need to listen to the old man and not stray from the path. 282. The roof of the cave and the ceiling of the tunnel beyond is tall enough for you to ride through it on horseback with ease. Yet the interior is pitch black. And if you are not to stray wildly off course, you will need some form of light to illuminate the way ahead. If you possess a culty fire sphere, which I do, turn to 219. Question. Oh, yeah. Yes. That last that last sentence when you said wildly off course, does it actually say that in the new edition? 
If you are not to stray wildly off course, you will need some form of light. Yeah, that's what it says. What does it say? Yeah, because the, the, the word wildly isn't in, in this this one. Oh, okay. So there you go. They tweak tweak things a little bit. Two one nine. Uh, Jonathan's clarifying. You can use it at any time. Uh, you can use it any time. It, it doesn't say you can't use hunting. Challenge mode for long time fans is no form of hunting. Lets you avoid meals for those who like the realism. Well, I I do like realism, but I'm lone wolf and I'm very cool at hunting, and that's my realistic skill, and I have it. So I will use it. Was the, was was the word ceiling in the first sentence of that paragraph? Yeah. As well. Yeah. Okay, the yeah. Because that that wasn't in. It's not in this on in this one either. The roof of the cave and the ceiling of the tunnel beyond is tall enough for you to ride through it on horseback with ease. Yeah. See, so that's there. that's different. Yeah, it's, that's different from the original. Because this this the original says the roof of the cave and the tunnel beyond is high enough for you to ride through it on horseback. Now, I'll tell you now that when they've been rewriting and reformatting these, sometimes it literally, knowing as, a, as I do as a writer of novels, it might literally come down to, we need two extra words on this page for all of these bits to fit as we want them to fit on this page. So can we get an extra word in this one and can we get an extra word in this one? That makes uh, sense. Yeah, so it's probably, um, that might just be a bit of padding for formatting's sake. Okay, so we're going to three, four, one, uh, we're going to 219 because we do possess the Colty Fire Sphere. 219, which begins with the sentence, Your light illuminates the tunnel ahead. And after only a few minutes, you found your way through to a hillside exit that overlooks a tiny village called Vata. It is perched on the edge of the Tahu Flats. I bet if we didn't have that torch, we would have got lost and had to fight all kinds of monsters. The Tahu Flats comprise of uh, the Tahu Flats comprise fields of cultivated crops that form a fertile market garden two miles wide. They said the word market garden, one of my favorite words. They are farmed right up to the banks of the great moat that encircles the capital. Varta is deserted. Okay, so Varta is a village that's also not on the map. Okay. Um, all right. Its male inhabitants now shelter within the city walls, and the women and children have long since travelled south to the safety of Navasari. As you ride through the empty village and descend onto the flats, you capture your first inspiring view of the ancient city itself. I'm sure I've been to this city before. I yeah, think... There's, there's, there's a, f a few edits on, on, that, on those two paragraphs as well. Okay. Uh, extra words or bits taken out? Extra words and different words. Okay, we're turning to 100. Tahu is an ancient stronghold uh, containing a vast city. You see, because I'm pretty sure that Tahu is in the kingdoms of Terra. And I, 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 I might be wrong, but I think Tahu is the city that I went into the basement and it had the big toad. Oh, no, 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 no. That was... That was Takaro. Okay, with Takaro, which is also oh, right. Takaro. You know why I'm getting confused because Takaro is in a is in a junction of a riverbank uh, similar to the city that that's below it. No, yeah, okay, yeah, fair enough. No, so I haven't been to I haven't been to Tahu before. I've not been I'm wondering. If, I'm wondering if this place has a lake. <laughs> uh, that I don't know. Are you a <laughs> fish, man? Oh no! I'm just saying. Maybe, well, if it, if they did, it, maybe they called it Lake Tahu. <laughs> oh yeah, Lake Tahu actually appears in my first novel, I believe. Because isn't that isn't that the one that's near? It's got the 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 gambling city just to the north of it. Yeah, but that's pronounced Lake Tahoe. <laughs> I was yeah, trying to make Lake, a joke. Yeah, no, Lake Tahu, but Lake Tahu does appear in my book. It's in. Um, in my first book, Diamonds in the Sky, which uh, I can't see right now. Oh, it's here. So, yeah, but that's pronounced Tahoe, not Tahoe. It's Tahoe. No, I know. But like, <laughs> like, like, like Tahoe does appear in my book. It's here. It's a major location in my book. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the brother of one of the main characters lives at a yoga retreat on Lake Tahoe, and his sister is trying to get there when alien ships arrive on the Earth. 
Yeah, Jonathan confirming we did not make it this far. Okay, let's let's read this out. Tahu, an ancient stronghold. Yeah, bathed by ashen raids, the imposing walls and the towers of the red stone and grey rock assume the softened sheen of velvet. That's a description and a half. The city is often referred to as the Velvet Fortress for this reason. So kind of like the red stone of... Um, There's a lot of, lot of sentence reworking right there. Wow. Uh, beyond its towers and high curtain wall, you can see a thousand spires and minarets. They're grouped as thickly as the trees of a forest. Tiny lights twinkling the countless windows and portals, adding to the fairy tale splendor of the mighty capital. Near to the city's south gate, the highway is flanked by beacons which illuminate those who approach the gatehouse. A drawbridge spans a moat of black water, and as you ride across, a brass bell tolls from the portcullis archway ahead. Two, Two civilians at the south gate. Yeah, there Yells. you go. Yells a soldierly voice. That definitely should have been you, because you're the soldier. Um, race, race. Boston. <laughs> should let me do the second one, then we can do two different voices. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> we've, got, we've got to sort this routine out, desert, you know. <laughs> right, okay. There's a, there's a clatter of chains and a scraping of stone. You watch the portcullis, expecting it to rise, but it does not move. Instead, a narrow, narrow portal opens at the base of the wall, and an armoured guard steps out from the shadows. He motions for you to enter, and you follow Bannadon along a corridor, the stone which leads to a secure enclosure. You glance upwards to see the faces of a dozen soldiers peering down at you from behind a parapet that encircles the high enclosure walls. Okay, so that's a a fairly um, uh, uh, friendly greeting. All around with loaded crossbows, which they train on your every move. A small gate creaks open and two guards appear. They are armed with short, hafted, broad-bladed spears. Uh, that's your uh, that's your uh, voice uh, cue. Who are you? And why do you seek entrance into Tahu? If you have an invitation and wish to show it. Uh, I think we should because it's. We now know that that invitation is one of the um, mightiest families in the in the in the city. So I think we should show the invitation. Uh, you yeah. can tell the guards you've come to offer your services to defend the city, or you can tell them you intend to enter Tar enter the Tahu Cauldron. That's to find the stone. Um, so I mean, either we're going to show them the invitation, or we're going to tell them we're there to help defend the city. We're not going to tell them the third thing, which is like giving away our mission. Um, I think the invitation again, probably. Yeah. Yeah, invitation. Okay. Seems a bit of a cheat, but so, hey, we've got it, so let's use it. Three, two, one. So we're going to three, two, one. The guards inspect the invitation, and their expressions convey their doubt that the signature it bears is genuine. They order you to dismount, and one of them hurries off to summon the gatehouse commander. Fortunately, when he arrives, he recognizes Lothar's mark and allows you to leave the enclosure, although he impounds both your horses. You protest and demand that they be returned. I protest and demand that they be returned. But no Orders of the Senate, says the commander offhandedly. An emergency decree. I think there's more. All horses belonging to the civil population must be delivered into the care of the garrison stables until the state of emergency is lifted. You no, know well, you could have a good, you could have a good job in voiceover, you know. Uh, does it? Think? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I believe you've never done any acting. Okay. Reluctantly, you allow the guards to take your steeds, and as they are being led away, the commander hands you each a piece of vellum stamped with a date and a number. Receipts. Receipts. Oh, that's you. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I know that's you. He explains his tone notice noticeably more friendly. Um, you pocket receipt on your special items chart. Um, you need not delete another. Yeah, I would I would have thought that a, a receipt doesn't count as a an actual space. Okay, so I've got a receipt. Okay, well, I'll put that in there. Receipt. Um Oh, actually, I don't need to put it under one of the numbers. Let me just let me just put it as uh, extra. E I'll put extra. Extra doesn't count. Receipt. Okay, so we've got a receipt. All right, very good. Um, that's for the horses. Reports of the Citadel. Oh, here we go. So we've got a guy calls out another line. That's you again. Yes. Which... Report to the Citadel first thing in the morning. You'll be allocated your battle positions for when the enemy attacks. 
Okay, it says battle stations on here. Battle yeah, stations. Gee. Yeah, I know. It's a change shit. Battle stations in readiness, no less. Two four. Okay, so we're going to two four two. I think the big siege might be about to begin. Um, that might be a good place to. And we'll, yeah, we'll let, let's see what the next one says. But leaving your horses behind at the Southgate Tower. You enter a wide avenue flanked by workshops and houses. They are built either of redstone or constructed um, of rock, which has been rendered with red plaster. So this is like the red city, basically. There's a red, lot red of city. added words in there. <laughs> uh, the buildings themselves are small and densely packed, yet each one, no matter how humble, has a spire or tower that soars into the sky. The large, sleepy-eyed heads of stone dragons gaze down upon you from balconies of mirinets crowded with either bulbous, onion-shaped domes of copper or with platforms housing engines of war recently installed. Bannerdon points to an eating house and suggests you stop here for refreshment. Chibben's house is more than an hour's walk away, and you are ravenous after your long ride. If you decide to enter the eating house, turn to 80 or if you decide to ignore your rumbling stomach and continue your walk to Chibben's house, turn to 146. Well, we're going to have to cross off a meal if we do that, and I'm down to two. So I think maybe we should stop off for food. Think? Yeah. All right, stop off for food. We got money. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got loads of money. Got, definitely got loads of money. The eating house is crowded with soldiers. They sit at benches drawn up on long oak tables as is the custom, of course, uh, or sprawl around a log fire that crackles in the broad stone grate. Your entrance causes them to pause in their noisy conversations as they turn their heads to look you up and down. Their curiosity is soon satisfied, and quickly they return to their feasting and boasting. Uh, this way, gentlemen. <laughs> beckons the owner, and he leads you through the crowd to a table set in the corner of the high-ceilinged room. Bannadon hands him a clutch of silver loon, and the jolly red-cheeked man waddles away to fetch you food and ale. Soldiers are dressed in a variety of uniforms, many of which you recognise to be the tunics of mercenary regiments from the Stormlands. Two of the soldiers of fortune share your table. They talk in hushed tones and cast nervous glances at another group of men sitting near the fire. If you decide to talk to these soldiers, turn to 292, if you decide to say nothing and wait for your food, turn to 102. All right, well, we'll do this. We'll do this next decision. We're, we're going to pause soon. But uh, what do you reckon? Say nothing or talk to the soldiers? Uh, maybe talk to the soldiers, find out what's going on. In my experience, always get information in this, in this game. If you have the opportunity to talk to somebody, it's always good to take it. The men are plainly displeased, <laughs> having said that. So we're on 292. The men are plainly displeased that you've interrupted their conversation. Let's put the map down for a sec. Um, one of them, a jaundiced knave with dark eyes and curly black hair, snatches a jug from the table, takes a long swig, he slams it down and turns to his friend. Did you know? <laughs> he says, red wine squirting through his rotted teeth. My brother Kane was killed in Ragged Dawn last year. He was stabbed in the back by a lousy Northlander. Slowly he turns his head and stares coldly into your eyes. I hate Northlanders, he snarled. <laughs> They're all cowardly, backstabbing scum. You notice his hand leave the jug and slip below the table. If you wish to tell him you are sorry to hear what happened to his brother... Turn to eight. If you choose to prepare for combat, turn to 86. If you decide it would be wise to leave the eating house, turn to 347. Fuck that. We've ordered our food. We're not leaving. Um, <laughs> apologize or prepare for combat? I think apologize. Yeah. Make good. <laughs> it, 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 it does tend to be the lone wolf way. So We're kind of outnumbered in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think starting a fight is a bad idea. Okay, uh, apologize. Save your sympathy. Okay, so we're on eight. Yeah, save your sympathy because <laughs> you're about to meet him face to face. Suddenly, he lur lurches forward, a curved dagger gleaming in his hand. He flicks his wrist, and the razor sharp blade whips in an arc towards your throat. If you have the Magnakai discipline of Hunt Mastery, turn to 36. 
if you do not possess this skill, pick a number from the random number table. I don't think I do have Hunt Mastery. Let me double check. But no, you didn't earlier. No, I don't have it. So we're going to have to do the first die roll of the game, not, in, not counting um, the um, moment uh, that I rolled for money at the beginning. So, okay. So it's we're going to roll high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I've got a got a feeling if we roll low, this could be like a kind of your adventure end here moment. Okay. All right, so we're rolling a D10. Uh, I can't actually see that. I'm going to have to re-roll that because it rolled underneath my, my thing. Uh, I can't. Let's do that again. It's an eight. Okay. All right. So... Uh, 260. Uh, turn to 260, yeah, okay. Turn to 260. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened there. I had a thing come up that kind of uh, concealed a portion of my screen. 260. Um, so, in a split second, you counterattack his attack with a savage swipe that cripples his arm at the elbow, oh, we're straight into combat here. His dagger falls to the table and the soldier falls screaming to the floor. His comrade kicks back his bench, steps away as he fumbles for his sword. With a drunken yell, he unsleashes his heavy blade and leaps forward to attack. Right, well, we'll resolve this combat. And then I think that this will have to be um, the end of part one. Jonathan is asking me... If you die, how do you handle it on the channel? Pretend it didn't happen, restart the book. So I've only died once um so far uh and that was in book two and um, i didn't restart the book i restarted i went back to when i entered the port and tried every route that i could to see if because i felt the death was unjust it was like pay to go in in, in the inn or sleep in the stables if you sleep in the stables you get killed by an assassin it's like that was nonsense so um and I realized that if you didn't have money, every option that you had led back to that stables. So you had to have money in order to gamble, in order to get an inn in the room, a room at the inn, sorry, so that then you didn't get assassinated. Uh, I felt that there should have been another route through the town apart from that. That, that felt very linear to me. So I was a bit, yeah. a bit disappointed. Okay, what I need you to do is keep a record of the damage that the drunken mercenary is going to sustain. So he's got endurance of 26 and combat skill of 15. I've got combat skill of 30. So I suspect I'm going to kill him in a single blow. But let's... Yeah, uh, he's drunk too, so... <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, now, it does say if I choose to evade the combat, I can turn to 328. Um, if I stay and win the fight, turn to 170. Um, do we want to try it? No, no, no. Okay, let's, let's fight. Fuck it. I want to do a one. I want to do one fight before. <laughs> before okay, first roll. First roll is a seven, which on the plus 11 chart is he's taken 18 points of damage. I've taken none. So he's eight, down to six. Uh, he's no, he's got endurance of 26. So he's down to eight. Eight, sorry. Eight. Yeah. Okay. Second, second attack. I can't bloody read that. What does it say? Oh, it's a six. It's a six. Okay. That's good because it clar I see now what it does. It clarifies uh, on the thing. Six. This is a different die chart, by the way, to the one I had before, but the link is the same. So it's a little hmm. bit. Okay. I took one point of damage. He takes 16. He's dead. Yeah. So my endurance is down to 33, which will heal back up as soon as I get a bit of rest. Um, if you win the fight, turn to 170. Okay, we'll kind of see if we can kind of wrap up this this food station place. Seems like it was a bit of a mistake to come in here. Um, 170. As you step over the dead bodies and head towards the exit, the door crashes open and in rushes a squad of guards from the south gatehouse. They've been summoned by the owner of the hall and they're all armed with crossbows. Yield, North Northlanders, orders the captain. Uh, you have hope save our mercy no you have no hope save our mercy you cast your eyes around the hall for another exit but all are barred reluctantly you and your companion raise your hands and are taken to the south gate house tower bannadon because he's a magician is taken to another part of the city to be questioned 
while you are imprisoned in a cell high in the tower itself. Place an X beside each special item, backpack items and weapons to indicate that you're no longer in possession. If you have the dagger of Vashna, I don't. I always leave that back at the monastery. Um, so only rediscover them at a later stage. Right, so I've been imprisoned and everything's been taken off me. That is the perfect place to call a pause. <laughs> um uh somewhat annoyingly i feel like we should have just avoided this uh this brawl and uh um oh well <laughs> you did just kill a man with a flaming sword yes i cleaved him in two pretty much probably set half the half the joint on fire so uh we are to continue uh on one three four so i'm going to mark one three four on here and, uh, yeah, that's where I'm going to pick this up. Now, uh, I will probably play the next part of this on um, – I might do it on Saturday. Today is – no, actually, no, I'm seeing my friend and her kid. I might, I might, do, it, I might do it late Saturday night, which would be kind of early evening for you. Um, or I might do it um, – Monday, uh, otherwise. So I just need to check a couple of things because I wasn't banking on doing two parts. But um, I don't like to rush, so uh, that's good. So um, <coughs> but, uh, it just remains for me to say thank you, Desert Phoenix, for uh, um, popping on the stream, doing some silly voices with me. And, You're very welcome. Uh, uh, I much appreciate you 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 popping in. Um, so uh, you know it was a lot of fun, and uh, it's always nice having you uh, around. So um, yeah, whether you're on the wh whether you pop in again or whether you're following, uh, whenever I ask for advice, uh, do always uh, um, you know do, do always feel free to chuck in suggestions uh, to me um, on the stream. Uh, it is. Two o'clock in the morning in the UK, so I'm going to be signing off now. Um, so, Desert, thanks ever so much for coming on. Just going to remind everybody that I've got two fantastic inter industry interviews um, already scheduled, uh, both in the same week, actually. One of them is on the um, 12th of uh, uh, September. He <laughs> said July. Just goes to show how tired I am. Oh, look, there you are. You're still, we're still live. We're not. We're not. So you're you're still on the stream, just so you know. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, I'm actually I'm actually at work. I'm waiting for <laughs> waiting for a ride. <laughs> no, no problem, dude. So, um, so for those people who don't know who um, Tim Thomason is, I'm just going to put up a quick uh, a quick shot. Oh, I think I've got a fox trying to get in my my house there. So let me just hit my window. Yeah, see, my beard isn't that big. <laughs> Let me, let me share. I'm gonna go. I need to go out and check. Okay, so this is Tim Thomason. He is coming on the channel on uh, September the 12th, nine o'clock UK time. That'll be four o'clock East Coast, and you can work out the rest from there. Um, I had a 90 minute video chat with him the other day. That was a lot of fun. Really looking forward to doing that again. Uh, he's going to be on at least for 90 minutes, might be a bit longer. We'll see how it goes. Um, but very much up for talking to me about his uh, career, his checkered career, as he called it. Um, uh, he's a very self-effacing, well-humoured guy, uh, so it should be a lot of fun. And then I also have Danny Mosley coming on the night after that, who's an actress, actress from a British show called Dreaming Whilst Black. So I've got two fantastically different actors coming on uh, at different points in their career. So uh, thanks a lot, Johnny, uh, for popping on. One of the people who's clearly involved in the making and shaping of the game. Really appreciate that. David Macy, great to have you in. Keith, sorry, I didn't spot you there, mate. Thank you for popping in as well. Um, and, yeah, it just remains for me to say good night. Keep an eye on the channel. Keep subscribing. I'm trying to get up to 5,000 subs, guys, by Christmas Day. Not sure if I can do that. Um, I've got a long way to go yet, but if you can help me, please do. And uh, I'll see you all again soon. And